Welcome to The Favorites, the podcast proudly presented by Bet365. We are a part of the Action Network. I am Chad Millman, Chief Content Officer of the Action Network. I am joined, as I am in every episode, by my BFF, my companion, my compadre, professional better, Simon Hunter. Hello, Simon. Aloha, Chad. How are we doing, brother? Dude. We are heading into it. We are like days away as this podcast uh, is listened to because we're recording a little bit early, pulling back the curtain to accommodate my vacation. You don't take vacation. I take vacation. No, my whole life's a vacation, Chad. I'm literally living the dream. You are living the dream. You've been in Hawaii. You'll come back home. You'll just bet your face off until it's time to go to some other exotic location. Pretty much. I know if you, if anyone can make it work, if you can become a multimillionaire in your thirties and be single and no wife or kids, Chad, the hype is real. It, it is truly the life. You know what though? If you can be in your fifties and live in the middle of Connecticut and your kids are <laughs> generally out of the house, all the better. Then you, then, by the way, I'm not going to die alone. That's the difference. <laughs> uh, to uh, be seen. Oh we'll see. We'll see. Oh my God. We're getting laughter from our friend. Our former colleague, one of our favorite people, a nemesis of mine, <laughs> Matthew Friedman. He's going to come on the podcast in one second. We got a huge, huge show, a huge football show. We're going to bring Friedman in. We love bringing him in. As a reminder, the Favorites Podcast is proudly presented by Bet365, the world's favorite sportsbook brand. Sign up with promo code ACTION to get Bet365's exclusive sign-up offer. Bet $1 on any game and bet $200 in bonus bets. Bet365 is now live in Iowa. So for new users in the Hawkeye State, you get an even bigger sign-up offer. Bet $1 and get $365 in bonus bets. Must be 21 or older. Offer is available in Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, and Iowa. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Matthew Friedman, formerly of the Action Network. Formerly a fantasy pros. He's got a new job. He's the Brandon Cooks of the fantasy space, folks. Wherever he goes, it doesn't matter. He puts up numbers. I'm not telling you what the new job is because by the time this airs, it will just have been announced. But we do have live listeners on AMP, so we don't want to reveal it yet. Friedman, I'm just glad when you're on. I'm glad no matter where you're working, you can decide to give us a little bit of time. Yeah, always. Uh, I will always don the old Fantasy Labs hat. And uh, That's right. to, to come back on the show. And by the way, uh, you know, this could have been a really boring show. Like we could have been talking about some really low level stuff, but you know, thanks for having me on for the mailbag, such an important episode. So thanks for having me. Simon, do you sense the sarcasm in Friedman's voice? Uh, mailbag is the best. You get to learn a little bit about your own yourself when you do a mailbag questions, right, Chad? I love the mailbag questions that we got. <laughs> these are actually, I, I was looking at these this morning. Great job by Matt Mitchell, by the way. Matt Mitchell, kudos. He did some extra special producing. He was sending us mailbag questions last night. He was sending us notes for the other podcasts we're recording so I can be on vacation. The guy was doing his job, and I know he's doing a lot of other stuff. Uh, he's got a lot of jobs. So, my favorite, uh, uh, my favorite, my favorite line from him is, "It's always better when one of you guys are prepared for the show." So if one of you could go over the questions beforehand, <laughs> and thank, <laughs> thankfully, Chad did go over the questions beforehand. His expectations are so so, so low, low, so low that if we can get one person, it is the mailbag <laughs> episode. Friedman, I would, I would look at it as there's almost no one who could play in this space other than you because of how much you hate Simon and I, and also <laughs> your history uh, with the Action Network and Fantasy Lab. So uh, I'm gonna fire away. Here we go. Are you ready for the first question? Did Simon, Simon didn't even answer this question in the script. What is something you bet on during the summer that you have zero interest in the rest of the year? Friedman, you can go first. Yeah, basically every sport that's not football, but uh, specifically NHL. Um, and I do player props. I don't follow the NHL. I couldn't tell you a single name of a person in the NHL, but I have a model that's actually been pretty good at projecting how these guys will do. And so whenever 
before March Madness ends. And then, you know, you got the NFL draft and NFL draft ends. I'm looking to the next thing. What can I bet? I'll bet some NHL player props. It's ridiculous, but uh, it's profitable. And then, the, uh, you know, the Stanley Cup finals end. And then I have nothing until football. <laughs> Why do you have a model for NHL player props if you don't even follow the NHL? So a few years ago, I created the model for uh, March Madness player props. And once March Madness ended, I realized that I could actually pretty quickly repurpose that into hockey projections. Uh, and so I kind of did that on the fly and it ended up being successful. Hold on. Hold on. Why? Like, why did that work? What What is in the model without giving it away? Sure. That makes it possible to do that. In the grand scheme of things, it's about just projecting the number of minutes someone is going to be out there playing. And so, you know, if you have five uh, basketball players on the court, you're projecting 200 minutes. Uh, if you have, you know, uh, six skaters out there or five skaters and then a goalie, you're projecting a certain number of minutes. And so you just, you know, kind of make sure that you're projecting reasonable amounts of minutes. And then once you do that, it's pretty easy to project everything else because it's all just based on the number of goals, the number of assists, everything like that, that a guy scores on a per minute basis. But why would you even be comfortable putting money against that? How long did it take you to figure out that that actually worked? Uh, a couple of days. I mean, it's really just Seriously? changing. Yeah, it's, it's really just changing the model, reorient, reorienting it, um, you know, making sure that I'm projecting reasonable enough top line numbers and then dividing that out amongst all the players. But it really didn't take that long because I already had the bones of it, the infrastructure of it already set up to do March Madness. Simon, what do you think of that? My, my man loves the gamble. He's a true gambler. He just he literally was like, you know what? I could take some time off here, but no, I'm going to start diving into NHL. So uh, he's got my support. I love it. Would you tail him based on what he just said? Hell no. <laughs> Hey, these, these maybe picks... maybe in a couple of years, maybe after two or three years of running the no, model. No, 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 no. These picks have been successful and they're in the action app. There you go. Freeman is a prolific uh, pick tracker. Uh, I would uh, Freeman might have one of the highest followings of anybody in the action network app in terms of total people following him and his picks in the app. He's actually very good at it. I did, it's, um, it's over a hundred thousand. And by the way, yeah. <laughs> You guys need to give me my expert status back. I'm going to peel back the curtains. Give me that expert status back. So I will be incentivized <laughs> to make more picks in the app. You know who You know who can do that? Matt Mitchell. Done. He, like, done. Consider it done. done. I'm on it right now. Yeah. I've tried doing it for people. I'll take Chad's. I'll take Chad's away and we'll give it to you. No problem. Can sure. I get a pro <laughs> pro subscription while we're giving these things out? My pro subscription ran out. All right. I'll be one nineteen ninety nine. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> Matt Mitchell will take care of the pro subscription. Matt Mitchell will take of the take care of Matt Freeman's uh expert status in the Action Network app. Uh Simon, what is the one sport that you will bet during the summer? Uh, it's probably going to shock you, Chad. It's actually NBA. I'll do NBA playoffs. I'll do the finals. I'll do the draft. And then I'll do futures. And then I will not look at NBA, no joke, until after March Madness. It's just, it's a sport I do enjoy, but I just don't really care about it for the betting perspective until I'm after I'm done football. I'll take a little break. I'll do March Madness. And then I'll slowly ease my way into NBA. So NBA is definitely that sport where I get really invested into it, really interested in it, like love talking about it for a couple months. And then by by July, it's just as if it never happened. It's like I'm totally into football. Don't think about NBA until late April. So it, it's definitely a weird sport for me where it's like I really care about the NBA from April till June, and then I just don't don't really care about it at all. I do love your NBA fandom. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely one of the weirder things about me. Uh, mine would be golf. Uh, I don't think about golf don't watch golf, don't play golf, except during the summer. And it's not even because all of a sudden I want to start watching golf. It's for two reasons. One, I've mentioned on the podcast before my buddy Josh, who is a rabid golf better. And I mean, even this week, he is like doing chicken scratching on legal pads uh, in his state, tracking the odds for every book and looking for the advantages, who's undervalued. He's got very specific theories about form, about players on courses, about betting the top of the board and not betting the top of the board. 
and the guy's been on a streak. Like it's unbelievable how well he has performed. I love following him. Um, so that's number one. And number two, the majors pool. I do. I've mentioned it, this on the show. I've got this <laughs> majors pool with some uh, other action network OGs and they are all avid golfers, avid golf followers, avid golf betters, avid golf watchers. I have won. Nobody won. Nobody had Wyndham Clark except for Matt Mitchell, who should tell that story. And um, this past major. But prior to that, I've won four of the past six major pools that we've done. Matt Mitchell, do you want to come on and tell your Wyndham Clark story really fast? Sure, I'd be happy to. Wyndham, if you're listening, thank you. Uh, I try to get the neighborhood involved. We've mentioned on the show before that when the Bills win a playoff game, the whole block gets, everyone gets a pint of Ben and Jerry's of their choosing. So I've gotten everyone to be uh, Packers first, Bills next. And now with big gambling windfalls, which happen typically outside of football season, when I have no opinions, I will let the stakes be known that if it's particularly large, something happens, I'll have a we'll have like a block party. I'll have everybody over to the yard for, for dinner. Um, the latest one was Wyndham Clark. If Wyndham Clark wins the U.S. Open, I'll have everybody over. And then I stopped paying attention because I hate betting on golf and I would never watch it for any reason, despite being a degenerate. He's in the lead. He's in the lead again. He's maintaining the lead. Everyone's at his heels. It's Father's Day. And now everyone's hanging out their windows on my block, shouting at me, hey, you should turn it on, which I refused. Everyone comes over to my yard uh, to drink because the next day was Juneteenth, so everyone's off. And we're uh, we're sitting around a big fire. I, I said, I'll watch one hole, and I watched the final hole. He wins it. Everyone starts hooting and hollering. And the next Saturday, we had a, a big block party. I tweeted Wyndham a video to which he responded. Congratulations. He loves tacos. So uh, uh, the U.S. Open 2023 Wyndham Mania was a big success, and I, I look forward to doing it again next year. Not only that, one woman at the party who was – basically nine and a half months pregnant, uh, you made her laugh so hard that your wife predicted uh, that she was going to laugh that baby right out. And sure enough, that night had the baby. Shout out to Griffin Daly, probably our, our newest and youngest listener. Uh, yes, she, <laughs> she produced that healthy baby boy. And uh, Wyndham was a second, second choice. He didn't quite jump to the naming list but uh yeah we wish her all the best as well i'm looking at her house right now congratulations I mean, you definitely you definitely should add that to your bio man Mitchell. i'll make you laugh so hard you'll have a baby <laughs> oh my god that is so funny it's more of a, yeah, it's more of a threat it's a threat not many people can say that i that's definitely right. can't yeah. say it that's right <laughs> um all right next question uh continuing with the theme freeman and chad put answers into the script simon did not Seems like a lot of sharp folks, including you guys, are high on the Chicago Bears this season. It makes sense. But is there another team you are hearing a lot of positives about for 2023 that you disagree with? I'll go first. Chad. J-E-T-S. Jets. 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 Fade in the Jets. Can't wait to fade the Jets. Off the Aaron Rodgers bandwagon. Not even in my list of top 10 QBs. Preview of the next podcast uh, for next week. Um, Jets. 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 Friedman. Maybe the Broncos. And it's not as if there are a lot of people talking about them, but like they're getting enough like positive buzz of like, oh, they finally have a competent coach there. And Russell Wilson can't be as bad as he was last year. Uh, you know, not to spoil what we're going to talk about later, but maybe he can be as bad as he was last year. I just, I, I don't think that this is actually that good of a Broncos team and they play in a really tough division too. So I, I'm just kind of hands off on them. I, I'm, one, I'm one of those people he's talking about me i'm all in on the broncos chad you know this it's uh I, I can't help it i love sean payton and i can't stop looking at the numbers from last year i think it was what the hell was it with i think it was through the first 10 weeks if they had scored more than 18 points they would have been nine and one to start the the season last year again if they had just scored more than 18 points per game they would have been nine and one so um it kind of makes sense that you know they're kind of being talked about the broncos but Freeman's right. Like that division is so tough. And, you know, me and Chad are, me and Chad are lined up. We both we're just down on the jets. So I won't steal Chad's answer. Everyone already knows I'm down the jets. I'm going to go Seattle. 
I'm, I'm trying to look at the teams that I think made the playoffs last year that I could see them not making it the, this upcoming season. Is either them or Miami, right? These two teams that they've added pieces during this offseason. Most people are going to bet them to take another step this year. I got to just go back and watch the film on Gino. Like, Gino was a completely different quarterback the first half to the second half. The league really did catch up with that offense in the second half, the Seahawks. So, I do love what they did the draft, right? They they got another another receiver. They got arguably the best corner in the draft. But there's a lot of things they did last year. I just don't think they'll be as lucky, right? They caught a bunch of teams at the right times. Like, they played the Chargers after Herbert had cracked his ribs. So, they actually dominated the Chargers where they probably wouldn't have had that. They had a bunch of backup quarterbacks they played against. The Seahawks just seem like a team that's going to regress this coming season. So that's definitely a team that their odds have been moving. I mean, I won't name the podcast, but a really big name podcast talked about them. They dropped their odds from plus 250 down to plus 200, plus 190 to a lot of books. It bumped a lot of other teams in that division. The Rams included up to 10 to 1 to win that division. So we've already seen the Seahawks are getting a lot of money and a lot of hype heading into this upcoming season, Chad. You what know, was hey, the podcast? One, one quick thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say the, the podcast. B- BS. Oh, I didn't even hear that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bill Bill Simmons said he liked the Seahawks and like literally Bill Simmons moved the number. God bless Bill Simmons. So um I had a bunch of eight to one tickets on the Rams to win their division. Thanks to my guy Bill Simmons, I have a bunch of ten to one tickets now on the Rams to win that division. So um hopefully the hype keeps going up on this Seahawks team. Freeman. You know, the Seahawks, I almost chose them. That was like the second option. It was like them or the Broncos. Uh yeah, Simon, I I'm with you there on the Seahawks. Like they have potential, but you know, Geno Smith. Could he regress to like his career average? Yeah, he could easily yeah. do that. Uh, next question. This is for Chad, Chad Millman. Uh, could you compare working in sports betting at this exact stage in its media development to working in some other branch of media in some other era? Second question. What's it like today versus your ESPN behind the bets moonlighting 10 years ago? So I, I read this. That was the name question. of your show back then was called Behind the Bets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, love I it. didn't like it. I'll tell you what. It, this was a big point of contention. I, I was asked to do the podcast and I was trying to think of fun, clever names to do. And like eventually my boss, who was already irritated that someone had asked me to do this <laughs> podcast and it was taking me away from doing like the day to day work at the magazine where I wasn't right. editor in chief yet. I was thinking about these names and he's like, Fuck it. We're doing behind the bets. He's like, just name what it is. Yeah. I'm like, no, I want it to be more personality driven, have a little more flavor, a little. Nope. Nope. Behind the bets. I don't give a shit if you're a personality. I don't give a <laughs> shit if you're in front of it. It's behind the bets. So it was behind the bets, which still exists today, obviously. Um, I think within the sports space, the development of sports betting right now, the comps are fantasy and analytics um in that all of a sudden they have become these huge parts of sports in the way fantasy did probably 10 years ago when matthew barry really started to take off at espn and yahoo's fantasy became so big and the nfl started a fantasy game to compete with it and cbs etc um and analytics like over the last generation since michael lewis wrote moneyball it has slowly crept into the mainstream to the point where it was a thing that, you know, people who played stratomatic baseball like Daryl Morey growing up did to all of a sudden it's Theo Epstein and a universe of uh, stat geeks and analytics geeks running teams, not just in baseball, but in basketball and football and hockey too. And so um, this is the stage sports betting is in where it's caught on and gone mainstream. I think if it's an industry, some other branch of media, to me, it's a little bit like Netflix. I say this all the time, like the business of betting is going to consume the business of media. And Netflix, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was, is sending me DVDs, right? And pretty soon, Netflix puts Blockbuster out of business. And then it evolves and grows and morphs and transitions. And now all of a sudden it's, you know, the biggest threat there is to traditional media. And it's what Comcast, Disney, Viacom, they're all paramount. They're all chasing what Netflix has created, which is a viable 
revenue focused streaming business well they're all stuck in a declining linear space second part of the question what's it like today versus espn behind the bets new lighting 10 years ago side hover side hustle versus main hustle 10 years ago i'm doing it it's something i'm paying attention to and a lot of avid betting fans are paying attention to no competition everyone thinks uh and no one thinks they are an expert Today, everyone thinks they're an expert. There's so much competition. Here's a great example. I mentioned Matthew Barry in fantasy. He was a pioneer in the space, hall of famer, brilliant guy, good friend. I love the guy to death. Um, 10 years ago, he and I are doing an invite only panel for ESPN insiders. We're in Orlando. We're talking about fantasy and sports betting. He's totally against sports betting. Doesn't even want it in the same sentence as fantasy. I'm like, dude, there is no difference. The only difference is like semantics. Today, he is a betting expert for for NBC, right? That is the difference in 10 years. Um, side hustle versus main hustle. Yeah, I, Next I agree question. with a lot of that. You do? Yeah. Nice. You never agree with me. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, Simon. You've talked about tailing other people at action across other sports. Who are some of the experts you trust most for stuff that isn't football? Oh, man. I mean, Chad over here has hired about 30 guys to cover golf for us, but they're all pretty damn good. So I would say you can't really go wrong with any of the guys covering golf for the action. I would say for the other random sports, Sean Kerner is just money. Like, he's great at player props. He's good at baseball. He's he's really good at WNBA, like the women's game. Sean's really talented at that. So I would say if I'm betting big money, um, I, I've made a decent amount off Sean, no, no doubt. And then during the season, again, we do this show every Sunday. I'm really betting Chris Raybon's plays too. So during the season, when we do our show, Chad, on Sunday morning, I'm putting bets in off what they're giving me because I'm not a huge player prop guy, right? I really like doing sides and totals. Um, but if, when people give me any type of edge on a player prop, I try to make the bets. And my only issue with player props is they limit me, right? Like if you're trying to bet a player prop, it's hard to get more than a hundred dollars down, especially online. A lot of books just because they cut people off, right? They just know that's a big edge blend better in player props just because it's different than spreading total. So um, during this season, I definitely, definitely listen to the other guys. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those where I know that Sean and Chris have done the work and that's why I trust them. We're like, Sometimes some people can bullshit it, right? They can get away with it for a year or two, but they'll eventually get caught. Where I know those guys, especially all the years we've worked together now, like they put in the work. Hell, we were in New York, New York for that whole weekend, Chad. I think Chris was out partying every night, but he was there at nine in the morning with his laptop open, busting his ass, doing the numbers, doing the work. So, again, you just want to follow people that they're consistent and they do it over a period of time, right? You know, you don't want to just dive in on someone that's just been doing been good for a month or two. You want to really see what the longevity is of their record. So um, to me, those are two guys I really do trust at Action Network. Raybon and Kroner, party hard, work harder. <laughs> yeah. They do. It's the truth. They do. Friedman is like that. Friedman is brilliant. Friedman is a guy on player props, was so freaking good at Action. In his new role, he is going to crush it and be just as good. Friedman, is there anybody you're tailing for non-NFL sports? Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I'll, so I'll second what Simon said. Kroner and Raybon are awesome at what they do. Um, Sean Zarillo for MLB. Uh, he's someone that I think has been pretty sharp for a long time. And then, uh, you know, Matt Moore, uh, for WNBA, actually not, not so much for NBA, not like to take anything away from him, but like the edge in NBA is so much thinner than the edges in WNBA. Uh, and you know, he's a basketball expert across leagues. And so whenever he has talked about stuff for WNBA, I tend to pay attention to it. Brandon Anderson, NBA futures and NBA alt lines. The guy has such a feel for betting huge spreads, uh, in very specific spots. And he's great on NBA futures. Another one, uh, please make a prediction about one, what NFL QB is most likely to break your heart repeatedly this season. Chad says, that's me, Jared Goff 
Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson. I will be a sucker for all of them. Friedman? Yeah, so I'm approaching this conversation in two different ways. So one is Desmond Ritter. I like the Falcons. Uh, And I kind of view them as a bet on team this year. And I can just imagine several scenarios in which I'm on, you know, the right side, but Desmond Ritter does something that you would expect out of a kind of inexperienced second year, third round quarterback. And he ends up costing me. Uh, And then on the flip side, I view the Raiders and the commanders as terrible teams that people should be very desirous to line up against and bet against all year long. But I could see some sort of situation where somehow Jimmy G is actually good and he (laughs) covers more than I would expect. And that Sam Howell, uh, you know, plays like a latter day Tim Tebow and like just runs around and somehow covers spreads that shouldn't be covered and uh, break my heart that way. So those are the three Ritter, Jimmy G and Howell. Simon. I immediately thought the three guys who have the biggest future bets on. So Stafford. I'm all in on the Rams, like Chad knows, all in on the Bears. So Justin Fields way up there for me. Like Justin Fields has a down year this year. I'm going to lose a lot of money on futures. Like I need him to take that next step. The last one's gonna be Russell Wilson. Like I'm I'm just all in on this 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 Denver team in the year after. I like being a year after everyone else, right? Everyone was all over the Denver last year. Now their value is what it should be, right? Like last year, they probably should have been plus four fifty, plus five hundred to win their division. They weren't. They're like plus 225, plus 250. That was too much. Where this year, it feels right. So my, my three quarterbacks, definitely Russell Wilson, Matthew Stafford, and Justin Fields. Like, I'm I'm all in on three those three guys. I will make a bold prediction right now. At some point this year, Jared Goff, Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, Matt Stafford, Desmond Ritter, Sam Howell, and Jimmy G will all break our hearts. At some point, that is an absolute given. Also, Friedman, uh, Brandon Cohen, also known as BC, uh, 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 one of our product leads, promises you can have your expert status back if you promise to uh, begin tracking picks again in the app. 100%. (laughs) That's all he wants. Matt Mitchell. Matt Mitchell, tell him it's done. I brokered a deal right here. That's what I do. So So it is spoken. So it is done. (laughs) <laughs> so it is spoken. So it is done. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about Game Time so often on this podcast. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the United States. I love Game Time. Honestly, I use it all the time. And if you're looking to get out to a pro or college game or even a concert, Game Time has amazing last minute deals on tickets to all of these. I'm actually going to open the Game Time app right now for my house here in Connecticut. I can get into games anywhere, I can get into the Red Sox for low, low prices, the Yankees for low, low prices, the Mets for low, low prices. No matter where you live, download the Game Time app, get out, have some fun this week. You deserve it. And you can redeem code favorites for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, just download the app and enter code favorites for $20 off. So download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Next question. Aaron Rodgers recently mentioned enjoying the psychedelic uh, ayahuasca and noted it did not harm his performance as an athlete. Could the proper use of hallucinogens be the next phase in sports or sports betting excellence? I don't think so. I think, I think the process will be widespread acceptance and adoption of marijuana. First, I think like everything else, it's progress and hallucinogens are all of a sudden sort of the drug of the day. There was just a story in the Wall Street Journal about how in Silicon Valley, so many executives are leaning into the use of psychedelics. Um, I think 20 years ago, that would have been like, oh my God, these guys are geniuses. I think today, given what we've seen about crypto, about the tech industry, uh, maybe everyone is not as smart as we thought they were. But um, I do think it's going to start with marijuana. And eventually, a generation from now, get to psychedelics. Friedman. I mean, I can barely be profitable with no drugs. I think if I were using drugs, that would destroy my bankroll. So uh, for me personally, I don't see it as being the next wave of sports betting. I am so nervous for what Simon has to say. 
couple of nerds. What a bunch of nerds. Um, yeah, I haven't been sober in about 20 years. So take it from someone that is always smoking, loves the mushrooms, love magic mushrooms, but it's all about <laughs> moderation and picking your spots. I would say the microdosing thing is blowing up, Chad. Like I know like the straightest people in the world that do that shit now, which blows my mind. Like kids I that wouldn't even drink in high school now are like, yeah, like I microdosed my wife. And like, I'm like, what? Um, things are changing. So I would say I wouldn't recommend it to people, but for me, it's a nice reset. Like if I have a really terrible week, maybe I'll take the Monday off and go on a little trip, you know, Chad, a little trip around the world. So it's, it's one of those, it's all about knowing yourself and what you can and can't handle. Cause some people can't handle it. Um, I've seen that many of times. Some people cannot handle the psychedelics. So um, it's one of those where I, I would not recommend it to people, but I'm not shocked by it. Especially when you just talk about Silicon Valley guys. It's it's a known fact, known fact, that Steve Jobs came up with the iPhone when he was on psychedelic drugs. So it is one of those things where if you have an idea and you're stuck, some people it does help crack those ideas. In my line of work, betting, I don't recommend it. Like it's... I've never made a bet on any drug. Like I've never gotten smoked a blunt and been like, all right, now I'm going to make my bets. You're not out of a clear mind. You want to do everything with a clear mind, but after all the work is done, you want to take the edge off, do your thing. But I'm with Freeman in the sense that it is so damn hard to win sports betting. Do not mix drugs in like, just because you, if you're doing drugs, you're like, oh, that belt, that bet feels so good. And it feels like a smart bet. It's not, you're just on drugs. So I try to tell people, do, do the work sober and then have fun after. So that, that would definitely be my view on this whole, this whole situation. Exactly the answer I expected from you. <laughs> uh, uh, I, in college, all my friends were doing shrooms and they were like, dude, I'm telling you right now, it's not for you. Don't even do it. Don't try it. They thought I was honestly, they, are, they thought I was already uh, too optimistic and too happy. That's like the the Michael Scott line from The Office. It's like, I don't think anyone's even offered Michael Scott drugs because you, you just you don't seem like you need it. I feel like you're in the same boat, Chad. I think that I think that's accurate. Um, <laughs> listen, question. What can we expect from the favorites this season? Same schedule, same platforms. Bigger and better than ever. No joke. I'm not even kidding. So everyone knows that the premise for the show has always been Simon and I are making five picks for a contest. And we've got to come to a consensus on the five picks we like the best. And we generally have crushed it um, every single year. Years past, we've been in a contest, a big money contest that we can't mention on the show because it's never the contest that is done by our sponsor. This year, we are doing a contest with Bet365. Everyone will be able to join. You can compete against me and Simon for uh, the for a best of five season long pick em contest all season long. So that's number one. Number two, we will have shows live Sunday night in advance of the Sunday night football game, we'll preview Sunday night football. Also, we will get the review of Sunday and the heartache and the pain and the joy of Sunday out of the way on Sundays, usually in that 7.30 to 8.30 window. It will be live on AMP, live on YouTube. Um, then we will do our regular Tuesday show where we start breaking down the full slate. And then our Thursday show where we narrow it down. We do our sort of favorite picks um, of the week. All that's going on. The biggest news, I would say, be on the lookout. First Sunday night of the NFL season in New Jersey, somewhere in northern New Jersey, Simon and I will be doing an in-person show. That first Sunday live show in the 730 to 830 window will be live in person in a space where we can uh, do the podcast and then watch the uh, game together again, sponsored by Bet365. Um, Let me just say, Chad, you have my word, yeah. people. Me and Chad start 5-0. and oh. That week one, and we have that little party that Sunday night. First round is on me. First round on Simon if we go five and zero for week one. Let's do it. You're not Let's throwing uh, Matt Mitchell's neighbors a party. <laughs> Come on, where's the, where's the Mitchell. largesse? Matt Mitchell will throw Matt Mitchell's neighbors a party. Um, I'm skipping one of the questions here because I know Matt Mitchell pretty soon is going to tell me we got to get going. Uh, if you had a, uh, if you had to drive a big van of five NFL players across the country, nonstop, who are your five and why I'll go first. Kelsey brothers, uh, you know, uh, Jason Kelsey 
is a huge music fan. I feel like he would do a great job as sort of the road trip DJ. And I think I like his style of music. Uh, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, the guy drank Coors Light like water in that uh, golf tournament with Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and Josh Allen. He just looked like a baller. Uh, Joe Burrow. He's too cool. Von Miller, because I think he would say all the interesting shit. Um, and I'd also bring Mike McDaniel because talk about having a good time, Simon. He would bring the good time. <laughs> Freeman. Okay, this is an interesting thought experiment. I think it's more important to identify the players you don't want to bring than the players you do want to bring. Like, I don't want any divas. So like wide receivers and cornerbacks, like they're out. Um, but if I had to like identify people actually to bring, uh, I'm with you. I would go with uh, Kelsey. I would go with Travis Kelsey. Juan Kelsey brothers enough. I feel like if you had two of them in the van together, they would get each other riled up. So I want like that Kelsey aura, but I don't want it amplified. So Juan Kelsey, uh, I would have Kittle. This is cheating a little bit, um, but I would have Marshawn Lynch. I still think of him as an NFL player versus a retired NFL player. And I, I feel like the vibe he would bring would be very good uh, with you on the homes. I think he would be uh, like an all around jokester. Uh, and then Jalen Hurts. Like, I feel like he would bring a little bit of like solemnity to the proceedings, like in a good way. Like whenever you need just a little, like someone just bring it down a little bit. I feel like he would help do that. Like he's the guy who brings a literal briefcase to work every day. So uh, I feel like he, uh, he has a sense of humor about him, but also a certain type of seriousness. And then you had a head coach. I will go with the head coach as well. I would bring Andy Reid um, because I feel like that dude has some stories and he could, he could cut up for the entire ride. I think Andy Reid's a good choice too, Simon. <laughs> yeah, I, my first my first pick right away was Ricky Williams. I've always loved Ricky. He's actually now in like kind of the social media world where he does his own shows and he gives like horror scores. Like he tells people like their signs and all this other crap. I don't care about any of that. I just want to hear old stories from Ricky. Like that guy has lived a crazy life. You know he's got to have some good stories. I'm with Chad about the Kelsey brothers. I got to go with both of them. Like Jason is, just seems like he's hilarious. Travis seems like he's funny as hell too. So I like both those picks. Mahomes is Kenny Powers. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen that clip of they do Mahomes' voice dubbed over Kenny Powers. They literally sound the exact same and they talk the same. Like my they're BFF, rhetoric. my companion. <laughs> so that would be a good one. Mahomes, he's just a character. This is actually an Eagles guy that you probably never really like seen talk much, but he's probably one of the funniest guys in the entire league. Brandon Graham. Like he is hilarious if you have time go youtube brandon graham talking shit he is one of the funniest guys in football just smack talking and just in life like he's very happy go lucky and i feel like if you're doing a road trip you always need that one happy go lucky guy because there's gonna be dark days right there's gonna be days you're gonna wake up you're gonna taste the night before and you gotta drive about 12 hours on the road you need that person to keep you in the car entertained um for my last one another homer pick i gotta go with hurts like i would just love to chill with hurts talk with him. He just seems like he's so deep. He's so knowledgeable about life and motivation. He just seems like a good dude to hang out with. So um, shocked to know when I have three Eagles and my five guys I drive across country with. Hey, well, a couple uh, of things, a couple of things. Yeah. The Ricky Williams pick, I'm envious of that pick. Great <laughs> pick there. Um, if I had to think of a, a player that I would sub in, I would maybe do Justin Tucker. Because I feel like he would be uh, like wry. He would have that kind of like dry wit uh, where like everyone else has senses of humor that are kind of more aligned. He would sort of be like the assassin who comes in with like a really sharp quip that everyone is just like, oh, did you hear that? Uh, so I don't know why. I just feel like he would be he would be someone who would like add a different angle to the proceedings, but still be really hilarious. Uh, great Ricky Williams story. Uh, when Please. I was editor chief of the... When I was editor in chief of the magazine, used to be in the magazine, we uh, it was the Niners Ravens Super Bowl in New Orleans, and Ricky Williams at this time had retired. He, his last team was the Ravens, and he had recently retired, and he had started uh, working as a photographer. So we hired Ricky Williams to shoot from the sidelines the Super Bowl, um, including his old teammates, the Ravens. And that Friday night, we had a big dinner in new orleans a team dinner and ricky williams joined us because he was working for us that weekend and my wife happened to be at the super bowl in new orleans the only super bowl she ever came to me of the 25 i've been to it's the only one she ever went to 
And um, we were all having dinner. And I happened to be at the end of the table with my wife, Stacy and Ricky. And Stacy's not a sports fan. She has no idea who Ricky Williams is. And so she starts talking to Ricky about being a photographer. And then it comes out that he had played football. She's like, oh my God, that's so cool. Where did you play? Uh, were you any good? She didn't know he had won a Heisman. She didn't know he uh, had run for more yards than anybody at Texas. That he didn't. She didn't know the Dicka story, anyway, <laughs> right? And so he was so charmed because he could just be Ricky Williams, and right. the person he was talking to was not enamored with him because of football. She just thought he was a really cool, nice guy who had really great stories to tell and a really interesting point of view. It was so fun to sit with him that night. It was fantastic. I no, I, heard, I heard he's the man. He's great. He's really great. Um, all right, we probably got to go faster. Uh, Simon, can you describe the specific NFL prep you do between now, July, and week one to prepare for the upcoming NFL season? I'm I'm done at this point. Like right, right now, I did everything basically. If we went through, I'd give you all my projections for every team pretty much. Like I, I've already done the whole entire season. Um, each week, went through each week, have each matchup. And then basically once training camp starts, that's when I can start updating stuff because there's a bunch of new teams, right? If you have a new coach, that's a new scheme for the offense, vice versa if it's a new quarterback and a new scheme. And then defensively, it's a big deal when different coordinators come in. I mean, is I think Vic Vangio – did he go to Miami? I know he went somewhere where it's like, Miami. that's a big deal. Like Miami now is getting one of the best defensive coordinators in all football history. And they have a crazy good defense. Like if you look at their defense on paper, they have a ton of talent. So right now that's going to be an update. Once I see what scheme he's going to run with that Miami defense, because say right now I've heard them projected as a top five defense. Once I see their scheme, and I start getting some numbers behind it. I'd easily could bump them up to a top three defense. So that's kind of thing where, I'll make adjustments, right, once training camp starts and I can start seeing these different packages. And the beat writers are key. Like, I'm – that's my biggest advantage, I think, for everyone that does social media is you get such good intel from these beat writers. They're just – they're locked in on certain teams. So, to me, that's a big, big deal to me over August especially, where July, I'm tinkering with stuff, Chad, um, but it's kind of a dead period this time of year just because – I feel like most betters are the same way. Like once the draft happens, then you're just waiting for the schedule release. And then all of a sudden it's like, you're literally running through the whole season. Like it's just, you're just so excited. You can't help but do the work. And I just do all the work and all of a sudden July comes, I got nothing to do. So this is a little bit of a dead period before August, which is once August starts, that's the 80, 90 hour work weeks. Like that's where it's just never ending. There's never enough information. Like there's never enough work to be done. So to me, I try to enjoy this period, but Chad knows I'm obsessed with football. So it's like, this is the longest month of the year for me. It really is because it's so close to football and I can talk football for days at this point. Cause it's like, this is my favorite time of year. Me and Chad joke all the time. Like preseason is the best because you can have Chad on here talking about Justin Fields as a top 10 quarterback. I can't shit on it. Cause it's projecting out. We're all having fun projecting futures here. So that's why I just love this time of year. It's just, Filled with so much hope before your team's 0-3 in week three, and you're just like, I fucking hate this sport. So um, I definitely enjoy this time of year. Just It's just so much fun getting into football, especially the way it is our job now, right, Chad? Just as, as sports betting has grown, it becomes so cool knowing how many people listen to what we say and taking advantage of what the information we're giving out. Like, again, we were giving out Jaguars 9-1 to at this point last year to win their division. There was only maybe 50 brave souls out there that took that bet with us, and that's what I love that there's people out there that trust us and know we're doing the work. So this time of year, a little bit of a dead period, but once August starts, you know, July 25th, I think most most teams are fully reported by July 25th. That's when it's all day, every day, reading beat writers, trying to get information on each team just because it's so important to know what schemes teams are running because you wouldn't believe it, Chad. There's just different weeks. There's different matchups where a scheme beats scheme. Like it doesn't matter what kind of players each side of the ball has. It's all about what scheme matches up against other team's scheme. That's why I talk all the time. Belichick is one of the greatest coaches ever, just because every week he runs a new scheme, and not many coaches can do that. So um, definitely enjoy this final month, but I, I'm, I'm ready for August. Simon, I, uh, uh, I, I agree. Go ahead, Freeman. 
I agree with uh, almost everything you said there. The one addendum I would add is that you can shit on anything that Chad Millman says at any time of the year. I'm going to be pretty <laughs> insistent on that. You know what? <laughs> That's accurate. I think that generally the consensus yesterday uh, uh there's a new person working in hr at action and uh three different people told her to dismiss everything i say and all three of those Jesus. people uh work for me um <laughs> here we go russell wilson question as promised what should we expect from the rest of his career how is he going to be remembered does he have a comp here's my prediction he will go to the hall of fame he won a super bowl got to another one lost it not because of his fault bad play calling so many clutch performances uh two-way threat only player with 35,000 passing yards and 4,500 rush yards um I texted my buddy Seth Wickersham you know one of the most prominent uh sports writers covering the NFL um for ESPN he's been on the podcast uh great best selling book about the Patriots is better to be feared pick it up Here's from Seth. He's a mix of Boomer Esiason and Kurt Warner in terms of career. With Boomer, really good, but not one of the clearly best of his era. Like Warner in that he had high peaks and low lows, although Warner had higher peaks and lower lows. Um, was not convinced he was a Hall of Famer unless he has sort of a couple of Warner-like peaks. Friedman. Yeah, I agree with a lot of what Wickersham said. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, at no point has he ever been like the best quarterback in the league or even like a, a top two, maybe even a top three quarterback. There have always been other guys better than him uh, among his peers. So I feel like if he was going to get there, it had to be a longevity argument like Breeze. Like he would have an extended run where he's not great, but he's good enough and he compiles stats that push him over the top. But Based on what we saw last year, I'm kind of skeptical he actually ends up having that long tail. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer. Diamond. Yeah, definitely an incredible career. I mean, it's a kid that, you know, played four years at NC State, transferred a fifth year to what was that, Wisconsin. And, yeah. you know, that was one of those deals where when he came out, I don't think anyone projected him to do what he's done in his career, where I – not that I give him too much weight for that first Super Bowl, because to me that was just arguably one of the greatest defenses ever, and you had Marshawn Lynch. Like, it really was Russell Wilson, don't screw this up, and we'll win a Super Bowl. And the one time he did screw up, they didn't win the Super Bowl. So that I will definitely always hold that against him, because everything you hear, that's just pure ego. Like, that whole Super Bowl, every guy from that defense, they could not wait to badmouth him, Chad, when he left that Seahawks team. And I think that is a stain, where a lot of these beat writers are the ones that are going to vote for him. There's got to be more to it there. there. There has to be so much to it where Aaron Rodgers left Green Bay. Have you heard a peep at a Green Bay shitting on Aaron Rodgers, Chad? No, I haven't. Not really. Like, it, like that's kind of how it is where it's like, yeah, Aaron Rodgers might have been an asshole. He might have been full of himself, but he was never above the team. And it seems like Russell Wilson towards the end there thought he was above the team, right? He really, really let his ego get to himself. So um, if he can have, you know, Another good run, like Kurt Warner had that one more run with that Arizona team. If he can find something like that with Denver, I do think he'd get into the Hall of Fame. If he doesn't, I'm with Freeman. Like, the guy never finished top three in MVP voting his entire career. Again, I give him so much respect because he was a fifth-year player in college, and he came out, whatever he was, a third, fourth-round pick, and he was just incredible. Like, his skill set was so revolutionary for what we've seen now in football, right? That quarterback of – get them outside the pocket, let them create with either their legs or taking the ball deep. It was just a big transition of football. So I do think for football, he, he was a big deal because he's kind of set the stage here for all these guys. Uh, Lamar Jackson's of the world. Uh, again, people want to credit them like Vic. Vic really never did much with his talent, where Russell Wilson did. So I think he was an opening to what we see now in the NFL. Like he changed football for the better. But a Hall of Famer, Chad, that's just such a big ask for – well, we talk all the time. This is the golden era of quarterbacks. Like, there's just so many better quarterbacks over these last 20 years than him. So, I, I can't put him in. It hurts to say I just can't put him in at this point. But if he makes another run, doesn't he need to win a Super Bowl? Just get back there. I got to give it to him. Making three Super Bowls in his career, he's obviously a very talented player. So, he just needs to make one more run. I can see him getting in the Hall of Fame. Well, that's what I'm projecting. Like, I'm projecting with Sean Payton 
and a stellar defense at some point in the next two to three years, he makes that one final run. Cause that's it, right? We all agree. That's the yeah. window. Like he's got two that's or three years left and then it's over. Yeah, that's exactly. You know what, Simon, as we know, and as people will hear on the podcast next week, I can see into the future. My vision, my field of vision is so big that I am willing to take a risk and go out on a limb based on what I am projecting, not just what I've seen in the past. No, you. I don't know who's more humble. You are Russell Wilson, Mister Unlimited. See, I was gonna, I was gonna go after Friedman, and you came after me. <laughs> Listen, uh, last question. It's been discussed many times in the podcast. Uh, my eating habits have been discussed. We all know that I eat weird old man bird foods. Even my kids make fun of me for the bird food that I eat. Simon eats like a normal thirty something bachelor who. Uh, lives as if he doesn't have a care in the world. Any foods we both can enjoy, and I this is true, I will read to you a Slack message I recently sent to Matt Mitchell of what I would need in my rider when we do our live event in New Jersey the first Sunday of NFL season. I need unsalted roasted cashews, lesser evil popcorn, because I like it cooked in the coconut oil, not the seed oil, all natural peanut butter, honey crisp apples, Burlap and barrel cinnamon, it's a very specific cinnamon. I need oranges. I need Classe Azul tequila, the big ice cubes, 85% cacao chocolate bars, Perrier or Pellegrino sparkling water, loose leaf Earl Grey tea if it's afternoon, Illy espresso if it's before noon, along with the espresso maker or teapot, whatever. I need some gigante beans in a light tomato sauce for a snack. I also like uh, Franche. Franchi Delicate Olive Oil. <laughs> Simon, you can pick anything from that menu. I got to be left off, Chad. I, I It popped in my head. What One thing we love together, we both love chocolate. I love chocolate. And I sent my guy here, Chad, the best chocolate in New Jersey. That's right. Charlotte's chocolate. I think Chad ate the whole bag in one night, which by myself blew my mind. So I would say chocolate pretzels. Me and Chad see eye to eye on chocolate pretzels. We could, we could definitely do that. Friedman. Can we see eye to eye on anything? We can't usually. <laughs> I mean, I guess who says no to chocolate, um, big ice cubes, honey crisp apples. <laughs> that's good. Th- those are good. But like, where's the where's the beef? You know, like put put some meat in there. Get some, some I don't protein. Eat meat? Are you kidding? Look at me? look at this guy. You think he eats meat? I don't eat beef. <laughs> what is the matter with you? I'm I, I, I'm saving the environment. Every day someone doesn't eat meat is a better day for the world. I'm I'm literally going to be dead in 10 years. I eat bacon like every day, which is apparently the worst thing you can eat. But you know what the difference is? I eat like I want to be superhuman and live forever. You're microdosing, getting high and eating bacon. Guess who's going to live to a a riper old age? Probably me. I got 20 years on you. Exactly. (laughs) what I'm saying. All right. Uh, as a reminder, the Favorites Podcast is proudly presented by Bet365, the world's favorite sportsbook brand. Sign up with promo code ACTION to get Bet365's exclusive sign-up offer. Bet $1 on any game and get $200 in bonus bets. Bet365 is now live in Iowa, so for new users in the Hawkeye State, you get an even bigger sign-up offer. Bet $1, get $365 in bonus bets. Must be 21 or older. Offer is available in Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, and Iowa. Gambling problem, call or text 1 800 Gambler. Thank you, Matthew Friedman, original, original employee of Fantasy Labs, Action Network, formerly of Fantasy Pros. By the time you hear this, everyone will know where Friedman is now working, but we're excited for him. He's going to do great work. Check it out. I am Chad Millman for Simon Hunter, for Matt Mitchell, for Tito Benash. This has been the Favorites Podcast part of the Action Network presented by Bet365. Download from Apple Podcasts, from Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Rate, review, subscribe, leave us five stars, say whatever you want. Feedback is a gift. Till next time, love you.